So if you are a nonprofit, I can bet that you have a bunch of amazing ideas sitting on a to be funded list. Let me guess, you have all these great ideas, you know that you could do so much if you were able to scale and you had the capacity. So you put these ideas on a to be funded list and maybe they get brought up like once a year at a board meeting and then they remain on the list. And I am here to tell you that you're never going to get that funding for those programs if you don't take the time to flesh out those ideas. Exactly what problem are they solving? How would you execute it? How much money would they take? Why are you the best person? Why are you the best organization to execute these programs? Okay, and how will you demonstrate impact, right? How are you gonna measure the effectiveness of these programs? You've gotta flesh that out for each one of your ideas if you want to be able to get the funding, if you wanna move them off the to be funded list and onto one of the robust offerings that you have at your nonprofit. So. What I want to talk to you about today is this simple one pager. Again, we're not getting into like hours of fleshing out a whole idea, but you can build a simple one pager for every single idea that you have that you want to get funded. And I'm gonna show you exactly what should be included and then how you can use it to get that funding. Let's talk about it. Welcome to episode 44 of Four Purpose Live, where I help you get clear, get focused, and be impactful simply by stepping into the calling that you have been given without taking on that common narrative that nonprofits have to struggle. That's right, together we can get you in your sweet spot using your strengths and talents to serve this world and build a movement for your cause simply by living for purpose, on purpose. I'm Rebecca Britt, your host, and today we are talking about a simple one pager to get funding for your ideas, okay? All of your ideas need this simple one pager and guess what, I have created a template for you. So if you head on over to forpurposelive.com slash page, there is a completely editable, it's in a Google doc, you can make a copy of it and just start editing away. And this will help you just bang out these one pagers and have them as a resource. So first I want to talk to you about why you need it, why you have to go on over to forpurposelive.com slash page and snag it and make one for each one of your ideas, each one of your programs. So first you need to exercise your pitch muscle. What you're going to do when you're developing this one pager is you're going to figure out a very succinct way to talk about the problem, the solution, why your program matters, what your idea is, how much money it's going to take, all these things, right? So if you have to articulate this, if you've got to wordsmith kind of like, so what is this program? How are we going to deliver it? How much is it going to take? You're exercising your pitch muscle because you've already thought about some of these things when somebody is talking to you about this program or you have an opportunity to pitch it to somebody, you're already gonna be like, I've written all of this, I know it, I've got my ideas, my thoughts organized and I'm able to pitch it. So you want to exercise your pitch muscle, not just for pitches. If you do this for every time you come up with an idea, you will also be exercising, like making these things will become easy for you. So it's not like, oh, I have to develop a one pager and I don't even know what to say. You're like, oh no, we develop these all the time. I know exactly why this will be impactful. And I'm here to tell you that you do know. If you think it's gonna be a good program for your people, like you think that this program would really help advance your mission, then you do feel some type of way about it. Like you feel good about it. You do know that this would be helpful. So you can articulate that, you can write it down. And let me tell you, if you can't articulate it, like if you're like, oh, I don't really know like how much it would take, or I don't really know how impactful it would be or what problem it would really be solving, then ain't nobody funding that. Like nobody else is gonna understand it either, okay? So you need to be like, no, I'm confident, I'm sure about it, I've written it out, I stand behind it. And so it will help you feel confident and feel like you know exactly what you're talking about when people start giving you, showing some interest or, or asking you questions about it, okay? So you also never wanna be stuck in a position where 
you know, let's say somebody comes out and volunteers at your organization or you're on the phone with somebody and they start talking about something that's related to an idea you guys have had for years and you're so excited. Be like, oh my gosh, we've actually been planning on doing something just like that. We've talked about it. And then they say, oh really? That would be great. Can you send something over so that we can see like what you guys have planned or that's actually really aligned with our funding this year. Can you send something over? And then what do you do? Sure. <laughs> and you get off the phone and then you call your team in or if it's just you, you're like, okay, I need to develop something and you're overwhelmed and you're always in this pants on fire mode, right? Because somebody asked for something and you're letting them dictate your time. Well, no. If you've already fleshed this out and you've already gotten it into a one pager, then anytime somebody's like, can you send something over on that? You can say, yeah, hey, we have a simple one pager and we would love to continue the conversation. You send it over and it's an invitation. It is an invitation to talk more about this program or service and to flesh it out even further. What's good about this template that I give you is it's super simple. It's almost too simple. Like there's way more to say about the problem and the solution and and what you would do and how you would actually spend the money and all of that, right? But this isn't a full proposal. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to start a conversation. And why I like the simplicity of it is if you get in the weeds, like you write a full fledged proposal for funding for something before you've identified who you're pitching the program to, then you may have done a bunch of work that you didn't need to do and you're not considering your funder. So, the simple one pager just talks about the very top line, um, you know, problem, solution, budget, what it's going to take, impact measures, a top line of your ideas of what this would look like. But if you get a particular funder that's like, oh my gosh, this is great. This is the vision we kind of had. Would you be able to fit into that? You can develop your full fledged proposal to them around what they are interested in as long as it remains mission aligned, right? We're not going to change our mission for funding, but as long as like, it's just a few things, maybe they wanted to add a particular piece to the programming or, you know, they wanted to add a few things that you hadn't thought of, then you can massage this idea into something that works for the funder as well. When you develop the bigger proposal. So when you're looking at this template, don't think, well, you know, there's not enough here. It is enough to have a conversation starter. It's enough to make you feel like you have fleshed this out, that you've thought about it. It's enough to make a funder think that you've fleshed this out and that you've thought about it and that you've put some type of price tag on it and that you've thought about how you would demonstrate some metrics. And it relieves your anxiety. You know that you have something to give if somebody asks for it and it is meant to be a conversation starter. And if somebody even says like, oh, this isn't very fleshed out. This is kind of simple. We have some more questions. You can say like, absolutely. That is actually why we created this is so that we could have the conversation and make sure that as in the full development of this program that we are taking into account, you know, your interest in, in your, your mission and where your heart is. You need to have all of these things, the idea, the cost, what would it take? And then think about what could you possibly do now? So usually when I develop these one pagers, I develop something for a whole program, like how I would launch this program serving 25 kids and it would take me a hundred thousand dollars. And you really do want to think about that. It would take a portion of the executive director's time and it would take uh, hiring a program director and it would take supplies and all of this training and it would cost a hundred thousand dollars and i want you to think at that scope like what is the big program that you want to launch and what's the big budget that you need money for because you always want to have where you're headed in mind especially when you're talking to funders and if they have the money great but also think about what could you do now could you serve like one kid instead of 25 like could you serve one and what that does is it allows you to kind of get proof of concept. So you create the one pager of the full fledged program and all the money that you need and everything it's going to take. But if you can just serve one kid or start testing out this program in a very small pilot way, what that will do is you can add to your one pager and say, we've actually done a pilot. We're actually doing this now and it's working really well. We only do it for two kids and we want to make this a full fledged program. Uh, here's what we found 
so people start like, okay, you're not just, this isn't just an idea. This is something that you've tried to implement. You've implemented it on a very small scale, but with their help, you could do it at full scale. And why this is important is like, now you're really putting your money where your mouth is and they're trusting, you're building their confidence that you'll actually probably execute this because you're already doing it with one kid or two kids and you're showing like you literally just need money for funding to scale it up. So they have more confidence. It's not just an idea, it's something you're executing. So if there is a way to do your program that's like an idea for funding, but you are gonna, you can do it on very, very small scale, or there's some piece of it you could do today, do that because it also helps you get your model dialed in. It helps you make, you know, you'll make some errors and you'll realize, Ooh, when we launch this as a full program, we're definitely not going to do this. or we're going to change this about it. It allows you to get pictures, pictures for social media, pictures for the funding deck, right? Like what would it look like if you were offering, let's say you wanted to offer meals to a whole city. Okay. Well you can offer meals to like one person. And like, what does it look like when you, maybe you just, you have an idea to cook meals, have the whole community come together and cook meals, but you don't have a kitchen yet. You don't have any of that, but you can go buy a meal. I've thought about this with my own programming. Like, uh, I want to offer vacations for foster parents because it's really hard for foster parents to get time away. And I know that vacations matter as far as being like a good parent and feeling like you can sustainably be a good person for your kids. You need a vacation. And like, do I have ideas of a big property with cabins and places for people? Yeah, I do. But what could I do today? Well, it'd be a lot easier for me to just fund a vacation, pay the money for them to go on a week vacation in another place because I don't have the property. But what could I do with that one week? I could get them pictures. I could ask them like, did this vacation help? What was missing? And then that information would help me when I'm building this big property. Okay. Just an example of how you can still start while your one pager is sitting on the shelf waiting to get funded. And that's a really great way to prove to funders that you are willing to take the next step. So that is why you need a one pager. All right. You need a one pager so that you build your confidence so that you have something to give when somebody asks about it to exercise that pitch muscle. All right. And honestly, if you have not articulated it, do not even expect anybody to care or hand over a check. If you can't throw together a one pager, if you and your board have talked about this over and over again, this great program that you would do, and you do not have anything official in writing on it. Come on. You could write this thing in the time that one of those conversations take. All right. Okay. So let's talk about what's actually included in this one pager. So if you go grab your template for purposelive.com slash page, you can see this, you're going to have your title of your program at the top and then right under it, a purpose statement. So usually every program should have its own little mission statement. What is that program's desired result for the population that it's serving? So for mine and in the template, you'll see mine is stable moments. And right below it, I say developing life skills for healthy transitions into adulthood. All right. Then a picture, just a picture doesn't need to, obviously it might be a stock photo because you don't, haven't run this program. That's fine. A picture that evokes something. Okay. In mine, I have a child and a mentor together you can just do, you know, a picture of a soup kitchen, a picture of the humane society, like whatever you, so that you can give the funder an idea of what it would look like in action. You're going to start with the problem. What's the problem that you're addressing with this program? So if you're going to talk about homelessness, if you're going to talk about how many dogs that don't have homes in your area or how many dogs are surrendered each year in a specific county. Okay. And then you're going to talk about the solution. Why is your program the solution? How does your program specifically meet the need of the problem that you just said? Problem solution. Then you're going to talk about funding needed. So, what funding is needed? And I wouldn't just say hundred thousand dollars. Okay. I would say we need to hire a full-time staff to do this. We need supplies. We're going to need an area, like say a sentence or two about what you're going to buy with the money. And then in bold, put the number of dollars that you're going to need. You're going to include why you, so here's the problem. Here's the solution. This is what it's going to take to run it. And this is why you should trust us with your money. 
So here is where you would want to put like, do you have relationships already with uh, people that will give you referrals? Do you have good relationships with strategic partners in the community? Do you have a team that has so much experience in this area that you've pulled together this team um, that will be you know, critical in delivering this service? That's all great like what sets you apart statements. I actually have another video that I'll put up here um, that is how to develop your what sets you apart. I actually have another worksheet too to develop your what sets you apart statement. I would just drop your what sets you apart statement in this area of why us. And then finally, you have impact metrics. So I write in the template, uh, we are prepared to collect and report data on these three metrics, number of kids enrolled, percent with uh, developed life skills, whatever metrics you come up with. If your funder can see that you are prepared to collect data, you've already thought the metrics through and you are prepared to report back to them how their dollars are being used and impactful, that will be impressive to them that you've already thought of that, okay? That's it, that's it. You just have the name, your purpose statement, the problem, the solution, what it's gonna cost, why you, and impact metrics. Boom, 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 okay? I'm promising you, the hardest part about this is getting it succinct, like you need to trim, right? You're gonna load everything in and it's not gonna be a one pager, it's gonna be a five pager. Don't make it a five pager, make it a one pager. I don't care what kind of like design magic you need to do to get all the words to fit in a page, but just make it a one pager. Donors need to be able to grab it, go, okay, cool, problem, solution. It is supposed to be a conversation starter. When you're sending this out, say that, okay? And that brings me to how to use it. Now that you've developed this thing, please do not just leave it in your Google Drive so that I don't know, someday when somebody asks you, you can dust that puppy off and hand, no, like let's use it, let's be strategic. We've now taken the time to actually articulate, like develop this pretty sweet idea, okay? So on your website, have an area that says funding opportunities and have three funding opportunities with three one-pagers. Anybody at any time can download these funding opportunities. What this allows people to do really more than even, you know, obviously, okay, okay. Are you gonna have a funder go on and be like, oh, I'm looking for funding ideas and download and be like, I call you up and say, I have $100,000 for this idea from your one pager. Probably not. But what it does show is that you guys are thinking forward. You guys are thinking about what programs you could implement. You're showing a need. When I first started my program, I had, you know, a nice website and I had videos and I had all of this stuff and I, t people told me, Rebecca, we never gave because you look very buttoned up, okay? So having the need clearly articulated on your site shows like, listen, we have these great things going on and yes, we have this awesome mission that we accomplish all day long, but we are going places and we do not have the capacity or the funding to be able to go the places we want to go. And we could be more mission impactful if we these things were funded. So it shows people that you have a big vision and that you haven't, you're not just like living Groundhog's Day, doing the same thing days in, days out. You guys are actually strategically thinking about what's going to get your mission accomplished. And you're thinking through programs that would be really impactful for your members. And you're saying, we know exactly what it will take. We're just waiting on the money. So I know that I would want to give to an org that is thinking about, has critically thought about some programming that would be effective and has critically thought through that programming and has developed a one pager for it. So it's just showing like you've kind of got your stuff together, you've thought it through. And it allows you like when somebody's like, what do you need or where are you guys headed? Or if big money was gonna come your way that you could go like, actually, we know exactly what we're doing. We would like, three of these projects funded or, you know, one of three of these projects funded and, and we can kind of choose that way. So it's not like if somebody did drop a million dollars in your lap, you wouldn't want to go figure out what are we going to do with this, okay? So you want to have it on your website. You want to have it anytime someone asks. Anytime you are having a conversation and somebody's like, oh, you know, 
I know Ed is the, you know, whatever, president of the Rotary Club and he'd be interested. Ask, can I send you over some information? Could I send you over um, a few things that we have, a few one pagers on some programs and some ideas and see if it's aligned? And then maybe we could uh, set up a time to talk to go through to go through them. And now you've started a conversation with a possible major donor in your area. So anytime you're having these conversations, ask, even if you're like, you know what, it's just a guy from our church. And I don't think he makes that much money and I don't think he's that interested. Don't make assumptions, ask, start just practicing. Hey, could I send over a few of our one pagers and just see, get your thoughts on them? And you know, it would be really awesome if you just gave me some feedback. Could we set up a time to call, a time to talk next week so that we could go through maybe how I could make these better or if you still had questions. Then when you get on the call with Ed from church that you don't think has that much money, you're not asking him like, Ed, so are you gonna fund this, this for us? No, you say like, hey Ed, thank you for reading over this. Thanks for giving your feedback. So how does this look to you? Like what more should I have included? Then at the end of the conversation with Ed, you say, Ed, do you know anybody like, is there anybody in your circle, corporations, churches, whatever, that would be interested in funding something like this or starting a campaign for to raise capital for something like this? And then now you're starting to make connections with Ed's network. Okay. So this isn't just like, we think of everything as so transactional. We think of like, okay, we're going to develop something and then we're going to shoot it out in one big blast to all of our donors and say, Hey, we made a one pager. If somebody wants to fund it, thanks. And then we're going to complain that nobody funded anything and we've sent it out to people. No, this is like, choose a few people, make a target of 10 people uh, that, you know, make your board members all commit to sending this out to five people. And the ask is not to get it funded. The ask is to get some feedback, to f figure out who's interested, to see how would be the best way for your organization to approach certain people. And then ask those people that you have some conversations with about the programming, ask them, do they know anybody where this program would be aligned with their generosity goals for the year? Okay. So there's never an ask. You're just trying to get, get people to a table, to have a conversation, to learn more, to see who's interested in something like this. Okay. So take notes, have people report. If you have a board that's sitting around and not fundraising for you, this will feel a lot better rather than like, you haven't sold any tickets to the event or how come you haven't given money or how come you haven't gotten dollars in? I know for me, like, I don't like asking for dollars, but I do like being humble and asking for feedback. I have no problem talking about there's a problem in our world and this is what I'm trying to solve. Like, how do you think I should pitch this? That to me feels great. Do you know anybody where this would be aligned? Who do you think we could get together to talk about this? People will come together to offer advice and to offer collaboration on something more than just like, Hey, can you, write a check for $500, $5,000, $50,000. Okay. So then you have people invested. Maybe you get a committee together around this idea and everybody's just talking about, so how do we like get this up and running? How do we approach this? Now you've got five, 10, 20, 30 people invested in not giving money to it, but how do we get this to work? Now you've got more minds. Now you've got more network and the money will come. Okay. Maybe you develop an awareness campaign around it. Maybe you develop an awareness event and eventually asks do come, but the initial asks are just getting initial feedback and then understanding their network. What's the feedback? How should I have pitched this? Does this align with your generosity goals? Do you know anybody's generosity goals that it aligns with? And can you connect us? Okay. That feels so much better to me than like, okay, so here's the problem. Here's the solution. Here's how much it's going to cost. What are your generosity goals for the year? How much money would you like to give to it? Like, I'd rather not go through that. I'd rather be a little bit more humble and just ask for their feedback and earn the ability to ask for money later. And then this is definitely a way to cultivate uh, corporate partnerships. So if let's say you have three one pagers that you've developed or two, you have two one pagers of programs that you really would like to launch. 
if you have any corporate partners out there, you know, in corporate partners are like, uh, you know, tractor supply or a hospital or, you know, whatever businesses that are out there that may want to partner with you or donate usually at a higher level, you can send these one pagers and say, Hey, we have a couple programs that we would like to fund. I know this one specifically speaks to what you're interested in, or I'm wondering if either of these speak to, you know, your specific corporate, uh, partnership goals for the year. Could we get on a call to discuss these programs more or who in your office could I talk to, um, about your corporate giving and could we t walk through these again? You don't need to have it all fleshed out. You just need to have it fleshed out enough as this template so that you have something to talk about with them. And then if they ask you to develop more, then go ahead and develop more. And now you're on your way to getting some funding. But at the end of the day, you're just cultivating your relationships. So you're wondering like, I don't know how to cultivate relationships with donors. I don't know how to cultivate relationships with corporate partnerships. Well, I'm telling you these little conversation starters are really going to help. They're make, going to make you feel confident. They're going to give you a starting place and you don't have to do that much work. And then you get to start asking for feedback and start having conversations. That's all you're trying to do. Conversation starters. Cause at the end of the day, the people that write the check are people. Okay. And people want to have a relationship with you. People want to trust you. People want to know you first. So sending a one pager and expecting a check in the mail isn't going to happen. And I know that you're like, Oh, all these relationships. I know if you're like me, I'm like, I don't want to manage these relationships. But to be honest, starting conversation sounds a lot better to me than, and I know sending out something and asking for money isn't going to work. Like I don't have high confidence in that. I'm just doing it because I'd rather not talk to people. So this is the next step. Okay. You don't have to ask. You just need to have a conversation. Start there. Ask for their feedback. Okay. All right. So let's recap. Why is this puppy important? You've got to strengthen your muscle of articulating things. And I know you think everybody on your board and everybody on your, in your organization would totally get why X, Y, and Z program, and you don't need to articulate it. If you think everybody gets it, then it should be no problem for you to work up this little one pager. Okay. So start, um, exercising that muscle of anytime there's an idea, you're going to write, flesh it out a little bit. Tell your board, tell your staff, tell your volunteers when they have ideas, say, Hey, here's this template, flesh it out a little bit so that we know what we're talking about. And we have a little bit more confidence when we are sending this out. Okay. What's included in this one pager. You're going to have the title of the program. You're going to have the purpose of the program, the problem, why this program is the solution, um, how much it's going to take. So the funding ask the actual request, the funding it will take. Why you, why should somebody trust you to run this program? Why are you perfectly positioned to execute this program? And then some impact metrics. What are you prepared to collect data on and report back out to your funders once you get this program up and running? Okay. And then how are you going to use it? Once you've developed this thing, make sure you put it on your website, make sure you're identifying five to 10 people that you're going to send it out to, that you're going to ask for feedback on it, that you're going to ask them for more people to talk to, who do you know that's a lot, that this would be aligned with their generosity goals. So you're starting to build your network. This one pager is a conversation starter and you need a one pager for every single idea that you're ever going to pitch to somebody. Okay. Anything that's sitting on your, when it, when it gets funded list, even if it's like a building, okay, it doesn't need to be a program. If it's like, we need an art shed, and that's a to be funded thing. You can flush out the problem, the solution, like nobody's going to fund a shed unless they know how much money it will take and why you need it and what the problem is and how it will serve you. Okay. And can you have impact metrics around a shed? Yeah. Like maybe you're able to increase your number of, um, uh, sessions or something because you've gotten this building or you've gotten this shed. Okay. So, show, show how you think that it is really going to lead to some quantitative impact. All right. Okay. I hope I have sold you all on getting your one pagers and I hope I've given you the resources and the tools so that you can develop these and you don't feel overwhelmed. It's just something easy that you can bang out, have your board do it with you so that they are bought into your ideas and that they start thinking about 
who could they use this as a conversation starter with? All right, don't forget to grab your free template. That's at forpurposelive.com slash page, forpurposelive.com slash page. And then please tell me in the comments the name of this program, one of the programs that you are going to develop a one pager for. I'd love to hear the name and for extra credit, add a little bit about why that program is so needed. Until next time, thank you so much for your service to this world.